The Triple M Grill Team. <laughs> Turn Gus, MG and Matty on 6 till 9 weekdays. Now, mate, as Matty said, if the thing's going on in news and current affairs, you're the, you're the man. This Nigerian situation at the moment, yeah. um, something that we, we touched upon on the Grill Team a little bit. Can you give us a bit more of an understanding of what's yeah, look, going on? Uh, but, and- but basically, what you have in Nigeria is you have in a lot of other countries throughout Africa and Somalia and Sudan, um, you have essentially a civil war between Islam and Christianity. Uh, there was an Islamic government in there for a while until that was overthrown. Boko Haram, which is this militant Islamic group, uh, terrorist group, want to set up their own government, their own part of the country. Now, they've been kidnapping people, they've been murdering people, they've really stepped up the violence in the past few months. This latest case where they've kidnapped no. over 200 girls has really really captured the world's attention. Mm. Um, what they're saying is that they'll be sold in the market as slaves. What it's also revealed too, and a lot of people have not paid attention to this, is the extent of slavery throughout Africa. We think it's something that you know, disappeared you know, past centuries. Not at all. In Nigeria, up to 6 million children at various stages of their lives have been bought and sold. Oh, my God. In, in, they often end up working in the mines. They are sold into sexual slavery. In Amsterdam, there's a lane called Nigeria Lane which are all girls being forced into prostitution who've been kidnapped and sold. So it's not just what happens in Africa then spreads throughout the rest of the world as well. Right now in Sudan, there are more than 30,000 people being held as slaves, uh, Christians held as slaves by Muslims in the country. So, you know, it is a vast industry. Uh, it, it's not something that belongs to a past century. It's happening right now. And I think this case has really crystallised it in everyone's mind, it's really yeah. catalyzed the whole story. Let's move uh, into the east oh, yes. far, and, and talk about uh, you talk about uh, Russia. Russia. What, what, one of your favourites, yeah, yeah. We've Russia. talked a lot about Russia over and, the years. Uh, and Russia, you talk about countries that recycle. Of course, you know they got rid of the Russian uh, uh, aristocracy because uh, they were ridiculously wealthy. They remove them, communism comes in, and the people are just absolutely repressed. All mm. of a sudden, now they've come out of it, and you've got a leader like Putin, who reportedly is worth seventy billion dollars, yeah, potentially the richest man in the world. No one knows. <laughs> Wow. And now is actually starting to to actually start to become the old Russia again. They're starting and, to claim back territory. And you know, Matty, what he said is that the greatest tragedy of the 20th century was the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, so what he's about now, which plays to the nostalgia and the strength inside um, Russia as well, to look to the past and think, well, that's when we were strong. Mm. He plays to that, and we're seeing that in, in Ukraine now. But the other concern is that, uh, you know, a lot of people say that when the Soviet Union did collapse, there was an opportunity for the West to try to embrace Russia and to try to to bring Russia more into line with the rest of the world. And that didn't happen. Uh, We saw the missiles still in place in Eastern Europe. Russia feels as if it's under threat as well from the United States and NATO. NATO had designs on Ukraine, and that's right on the border of Russia. So Putin says, no, I want a buffer around me because I don't trust you. So you have this standoff with neither side really trusts each other uh, and Putin plays to that in Russia where his popularity was actually on the wane for a while. But now, of course, he's more popular than ever because he's seen to be standing up to the West. And Putin knows how to use power. Mm. Um, power doesn't exist unless you know how to use he it. He controls of, the power. He controls the he, media. He controls he, all that. He does. He? And, and someone like Barack Obama, who's hamstrung by mm. the, the, the American political system and having to be answerable to Congress and some of the constraints that you find in that, in that, uh, in that scenario, does, isn't able to exercise the full extent of American power. Putin is able to play that off and say, look, we're not, we're not hamstrung like you. We understand the use of power, and we will use it. Well, Stan, it's, uh, it's always great to see you in here. And, of course, the new show is The Crimes That Shocked Australia, 7.30 tonight on the CI channel on uh, Foxtel. The Grill Team, Gus, MG and Maddie Johns. Triple M Breakfast.